Hey everybody, this is Bernie, y'all. On episode number 61 of Origin Stories on Creativity, I spoke with C.L. Schneider. She is an independent fantasy writer. She's an independent fantasy writer. Let me say that again. She is an independent fantasy writer. She's done it all herself. I mean, from beginning to end, for the last 15 years, she has done everything you could conceivably do on your own to be an independent fantasy writer. She has done from the ground up. It's impressive what she's put together. It's impressive that I got her on my show and had a conversation with her because it was a wonderful conversation. We talked about what it takes, a lot of dedication, because, you know, that first novel is hard to put together from beginning to end. You look at, you know, 400 pages of prose, and to have the type of reviews that she has on Amazon is impressive as well. She has a following. People like her. People like her work. People enjoy her as an artist. And that takes a lot to get. I mean, it's not just like a please read my novel type thing like you see on Twitter all the time. You have to be good at what you do. And people like her stuff. And not only, she's written four no, she's written three novels in her first series, and she's starting on her second series now, which, you know, that takes a lot of guts, too. Um, she's had proven success in one thing, and now she's starting something else to prove that she can do it. And her fans are following her. That says a lot. I really enjoyed this conversation. She's a New Yorker. She's up in Poughkeepsie, or actually a little bit outside of Poughkeepsie. Uh, you know, Hudson River Valley, good stuff, and you know, kind of rambling, but at the same time, there's going to be some uh, contact information for her in the show notes, she's one of those authors that will follow you back, contact her, talk to her on Twitter, her website information, um, will she follow you back, I don't know if she'll follow you back, I don't know if she's going to talk to you on Twitter, there's no promises I can make for another individual, but I... I will, her contact information will be in the show notes. Her website will be in the show notes. And with no further ado, here is C.L. Schneider. The Midwest, a small little town in Kansas. Oh, okay. What brings you all the way out to the, is it New York like city or New York state? Uh, New York state. We're about 90 minutes north of the city uh, in the Hudson Valley area. Oh, it's beautiful. Like, uh, oh man, we're going to be going up to, uh, oh God, where are we going up to? <laughs> uh, and well, never mind, it's not important. My brain we're is pro- we're, co- we're near the Poughkeepsie area. That's where we're going, Poughkeepsie. Okay. There's like a little town up there. <clears throat> Museum of Mirrors, I believe. Okay. Have you heard of it? No. But there's lots of little towns with lots of little museums around here. Oh, it's beautiful. We fantasize about going up there and just living, but it's impossible. Everything seems so expensive now. It Yes, I, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, we're across the bridge from Poughkeepsie, so we're on the other side. Um, oh, we did that but, bridge? Yeah. The walking bridge? We yes, yes. There. It's a, it's like right by my house. It's nice. Oh, we're, really? Yeah, we, we're there all the time. My husband jogs. We take the dog. and Yeah, it's really nice. Oh, it's gorgeous. Do you miss Kansas at all? Um, It's funny. I've, I've been here. I, I left um, right after high school, and I've been in this general area ever since. I came so home, you, and I just stayed. You um, never did New York City? You always I lived. never lived there, but I've visited a lot, but I've never lived there. Um. Oh, Okay. And this just, you know, this area just became home. I made friends and I stayed and I, I miss my family. The, but the way of life out there, you know, it's very different. I get used to how things are here and the tiny little town and um, 
Oh, it's funny though. I live in a tiny little town now. <laughs> <laughs> it's different though. I mean, it when is. you come back home, they think of you as a New Yorker. You're like an alien, right? Yes. I, yeah, I hear. Yes. They tell me out there I have an accent, but people here tell me I have an accent. that's not New York. So I'm like, oh, whatever. I'm just, you yeah, know. you're quaint here, but you go there and you're just like a big city girl to them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you've been writing your entire life, according to your bio on Amazon. Yes. yes. And always fantasy. Um, not entirely. When I was when I, it's been fantasy since I was about um, well, maybe eighteen, nineteen, uh, maybe a little before that. But when I was really little and I started writing, I was doing a lot of mysteries uh -huh. and like murder mysteries. Um, I would, um, or sometimes I would take my favorite TV shows and I would write scripts. When I didn't like the way the characters were going, I would write my own <laughs> scripts. Um, and this is when I was in like elementary and middle school. Uh, so I was, you know, I, I was always writing, I, I wrote a lot of uh, murder mysteries, and then that kind of morphed into uh, apocalyptic stories. Well, are you a child of the, the 80s or the 90s? Um, 80s. So you're definitely writing, rewriting some horrible, horrible television. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. had ample opportunity to rewrite some television because yes. all of it was horrible. I can't even believe the stuff we were watching back then. I know. And I was sometimes I would just make up um, newscasts and make my parents sit and watch me deliver like fake newscasts and fake commercials. And <laughs> did you have a big family growing up? See, I'm a brother and a sister and they were both uh, like 10 and 12 years older than me. Uh -huh. so, oh, wow. So you were basically by yourself. Oh, yes. yes. So okay. I, um, I read a lot. We had um, a room that was just full of books. Everybody in my family read a different genre. Mm -hmm. So it was just, I, the bookshelves were like overflowing. And uh, so I was a very early reader and I read everything I get my hands on. So it was, a, mm -hmm. it was a wide range of genres. So I spent a lot of time reading and playing outside and playing with the animals and just uh, using my imagination. Imagine that. <laughs> in Kansas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My only experience in, of, of Kansas is actually, what is it, I-5, no, 40. What goes across Kansas? Um, well, 75 for one thing, I believe. Is I-70, I-70. I-70. I if you're jumping straight across it to Denver or no, Colorado. Uh-huh. 70. That's my only experience. That, that's yeah. my that's from my memory because I really haven't driven out west for a very long time. So. Oh man, it's so bad. It, it was at night too. It was so oh. bad. But I hear Kansas gets nice. I mean, it gets nice and interesting um, if you get yeah, off of that and explore it. Yes, there are some. There are definitely some very nice areas and some very nice people, um, and uh, lots of you know neat little towns and things to offer. But. Uh, it, this is just, you know, this is home now, so. So when you're writing, does that ever come into your, I don't know, what landscape, imagination? What does, does it influence your your fiction at all, Kansas? Or do, does that landscape kind of never come into the picture? Um, not really. It really doesn't. Um, I, I mean, when I was writing my trilogy, especially most of my fantasy writing, it's all my own um, I make everything up, you know, obviously. You make everything up. You're right. <laughs> I build my own worlds, my own cities, my own environments, um, you know, all this. So, so you're completely world building from. Yeah, from in the, the Crown of Stones, world. definitely. Um, in my new series, the Urban Fantasy series, uh, it's set in a fictional city, but um, in, you know, the United States, in the Northeast. And um, there is a mention of, you know, one of the main characters is, is, uh, named after the tiny town in Kansas where his mom was born, you know, little things like that. Um, so you're always okay. drawn to this area then, the New yes. York area. Yeah, me too. Something it's about this area just- Beautiful here, you yeah. know, the mountains and the river and- Well, it's always New York for me, honestly, New York City. I, when I say New York, I always been the city, <laughs> the, the romantic idea of just the big buildings and the streets and the noise and the surviving it, you know, the- mm -hmm being among the big bad criminals and <laughs> making it home at the end of the day. Right. Well, I love, I love it down there. I do. I, we used to go a lot more before children and then, you know, life gets more complicated. How many uh, kids do you have? Uh, two boys. Sometimes it feels like 10. <laughs> <laughs> How old are uh, they? Uh, one is a sophomore in high school this year. Oh, wow. And the other just went into sixth grade. 
Wow. So you're almost done. Yeah. Don't say that yet, though. It's going so fast. <laughs> well, the sophomore at high school could turn around and say, Mom, guess what? <laughs> yeah. That's we're, we're hoping not. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Do they have um, the creative spark like mom? Does dad have a creative spark like mom? Uh, dad definitely does not. Uh, does not. No, he's not a, a creative person. Um, my youngest uh, is, I would say, the closest. He enjoys writing. Um, uh -huh. He's He'll be 11 soon. Um, when he was really young, I would say three or four, he used to like to make up stories, but he couldn't write them yet. You know, he couldn't write would have um, me write them and he would dictate them to me. So he, he was dictating uh, zombie stories and he made up these <laughs> stories about cats. And so we have them all. And uh, now he's decided that he wants to start rewriting them himself. Oh, interesting. So as a creative, as a creative person growing up, do you wish your parents that had facilitated more for you had offered you more and are you trying to do that for your ch your son, your younger son? Are well, you trying to give him an environment that you didn't have, or do you feel like you were grow you grew up in a way that gave you the the foundation, the fertilization to do what you're doing now? Um, I I feel like I did really. Um, you know, we lived in the country. Like I said, I spent a lot of time outside, and we had a lot of animals. And um, uh, there was a my my sister and my mother both were very good uh, artists. Um, nothing that ever, you know, they never sold anything, but they just liked to draw and they were very good at it. Sister used to write stories. Uh, my dad uh, was musically inclined. Um, so it was just, you know, it's all kind of there. I mean, they encouraged me to, of course, take the typical, you know, classes, the ballet and uh, gymnastics and tap. And, um, you know, I was, I took modeling classes. I mean, I was the whole, you know, the whole gambit. However, I really wanted to um, express myself. And they were very supportive. My dad bought me my uh, bought me a typewriter when I decided to write my first novel. Yeah, I read that. Yes, and, uh, my mom bought me a typewriter. Yeah, and I got frustrated. I like to bang <laughs> the keys, but I also like to press as many of them as them down as possible because that was fun. So I ended up breaking it. I never wrote a single story on it. Uh, I wrote um, <laughs> my my first novel was this gigantic behemoth 800 page of post-apocalyptic story and i wrote it on that typewriter uh-huh i still have it wow. in a box oh in my key box <laughs> so you're a very organized person i try to be but just, I'm, I'm so glad though that you told me there was no video today so i'm like oh thank god i don't have to clean my desk <laughs> <laughs> right well, now, that's <laughs> also one of the reasons i don't do video because i think i would have to clean every single yes. time i do a podcast yes well you know with school just starting a few weeks ago i've got all of their stuff you know all the meet the teacher nights and all the stuff from the school and i've got a bunch of my stuff and i'm like ah so this is perfect yeah, I've got canisters of chock full of nuts everywhere. There's <laughs> things pinned to my wall. I wouldn't want to broadcast to the world. <laughs> <laughs> my mm -hmm. wife uses my office to store Christmas presents for the babies. And it's like, no, I'm not going to do video. Yes. Be insane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, that's interesting. Animals. And you're in Poughkeepsie. Do you have a lot of land for animals? Or is it, no, this, this not, it's kind of urban up there, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. Like I said, we're, um, you know, like a, in a small town across the river from Poughkeepsie, but we're still in the neighborhood. Um, we don't have um, a lot of land ourselves, but we live right um, near some trails, some wooded trails, and then the, the trail that goes across the bridge. Uh, so, you know, the dog is always, he's, he's not at a loss for places to go. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's so nice. You, you wrote your first novel in New York. No, I was still in I was still in Kansas at the time. Oh, how old were you? Um, I started it uh, when I was sixteen. Oh wow, that's young. Yeah, and you know, then life happened, and you know, um, career, family. So uh, you, you just, did not go to college to pursue writing. To no, any... I did not. I did not. It was something. I mean, it was always like a someday what if dream. It was definitely a dream, but it was like one of those, you know. Far, far away dreams. It was not something that I believed was going to materialize right away or uh -huh. anytime soon. It was just kind of one of those. You, when you picture it, it's like all beautiful rainbows and you know someday. 
Um, well, let's prop I, the door open to that first novel. At 16 years old, you write a novel. What's a what's a 16 year old from Kansas's first novel look like? Oh, probably things I shouldn't have been writing about when I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with that. Um, <laughs> it was a you know it was a it was a post apocalyptic uh, thriller, I suppose. Uh, uh -huh. A little romance sprinkled in. Um, you know, I was very testing the whole Mad Max, you know, type of thing. So it was uh, into the world and there's um, uh, lots of gore and blood and death and mayhem and destruction. Good stuff. So, yeah, I, I can't mean, tell myself. I'm on, a, I'm on an ev elevator. You sold me. What kind of grades did you get in, <laughs> what kind of grades did you get in grammar? Would I, would um, I oh, edit the crap out of it or would it have been yeah. pretty solid? It was horrible. It? I was horrible back then. <laughs> It would have been like splashed in red ink, definitely. Really? Okay. But, um, but it was it was a lot of fun to write, and I keep telling myself one of these days I'm going to um, drag it out of the closet and do something with it and try to get it out there. Have you? When was the last time you looked at it? Oh, at least ten years, I would say. Do you know who uh, John Scalzi is? Um, I don't think that's familiar. No. Oh no, he is a uh, science fiction author. Okay. Um, he graduated from the University of Chicago, and that's not really the point. The point is, he says he has no chess books, no books in his chest. And a chess book is one of those books that he has written that never got published. He's a jerk. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he lets everybody know that he's a jerk, too. He has a list of rules on his Twitter, things that he will let you know up front that he will do to you, like be sarcastic. Uh -huh. And <laughs> his, one of his novels is called Red Shirts. It's, uh, a really, it's an interesting idea where he takes the red shirts from Star Trek and mm -hmm. he focuses a novel on them. Okay. And this guy published this novel traditionally, and his idea was every single dialogue, piece of dialogue, was going to be tagged with he said or she said. He wasn't <laughs> going to vary it at all. He got published traditionally. I said that, right? Wow. <laughs> he has no books in his chest. Wow. He has no books on the back burner. But anyway... Um, my point being is sometimes books are better left in the chest. Yes. I've lost. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, you're, you are right. You're definitely right. And yeah. I do believe that, that, um, I, I took elements from that, um, not, not literally, you know, but just, um, uh, ideas from it that, that morphed into other things when I was writing later books. So. It was definitely a good good starting point to have in the background of my head all these little things like it. Oh yeah, I did that. Now I can know how to actually do this with it. You know. What did you um? So you went from that novel to writing nothing, or had you always? No, um, I was still writing. I just you know was busy with work. Um, mm -hmm. and then of course you know I got married, had kids, and all that. But I was always writing and always reading. So funny um, how that works. I mean, it was kind of more a fantasy doing it on your in your spare time yes, really uh, yes. To pursue uh, it. notebooks everywhere um yeah. i have a few Scraps, story, right yeah, never really stories. finishing anything yeah well i have a few that i finished uh, a couple that i finished but most most no most were just um ideas or three quarters of the way finished or half finished or are these novels um, or are these yes. short stories oh no i can't do short stories i think oh i think too big <laughs> i'm working on a short story now uh for an anthology with a uh group of writer friends of mine and it's like it's so hard because I just I think on such a larger scope um, hard for me to to be uh, to not ramble I guess <laughs> well, let's get into construction of your novels then mm -hmm. um, in terms of how you develop them chapter by chapter because I'm of the mindset when you're writing a story that the chapters have to be conclusive in terms of how you get to the end of it right so wouldn't you consider that kind of a short story um, I suppose, yes, but I, I start, when I start writing, um, I come up with the character first. Everything mm -hmm. comes from a character. The story develops from them. So I, I, I create someone that I want to write about and I create their strengths and their weaknesses, all their flaws. And from that is where I develop the plot. So, and then I, I don't write, you know, linear. Um, I write the scenes when I'm first starting out, I write the scenes that are freshest in my mind. And then, um, 
the rest kind of just gets, you know, it's filled in as it goes, as, as, it, as you start putting them together and taking over. And uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's different. It's hard to um, convey because I, I always have a lot of intricate things and a lot of uh, backstories I want to bring in later on and uh, underlying mythologies that are going to come out and twist. It's really hard to do that with a short story. Oh, I love short fiction so much. I love it so much. I'm working on a novel. I'm working on my second novel. I hate my first novel. <laughs> Every day I wake up just wanting to work on short fiction. I uh -huh. have to make myself not work on short fiction. I have, I have to write a novel. Why do I have to write a novel? And then I get reminded because, because I get told. Um, are you a, what do they call it? Are you a pantser or are you a plotter? I, I actually do a little of both. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I when I'm first starting, it's all pants. Um, and then yeah, once too. I have, um, I kind of call it like my skeleton. And uh, mm -hmm. then I go back and I start putting some meat on the bones and put a little bit more. But I still leave it a little open. Um, I always go back and rewrite the first chapter after I finish the draft. So I usually just completely toss the first chapter I wrote the first time around. Um, and you know, it just it, I definitely leave it open to let the characters, you know change things as, as they need to. I love having an ending. I love having an ending. I like knowing where I'm going to end up. See, I, I, I don't scene. always. I, I do usually, if I'm, if I'm writing a series, I know ultimately where it's going to end up. Well, how do you know you're writing a series, though? I mean, is it just that you just keep adding things to it, and then eventually you're like, dude, I've written like 300,000 <laughs> words. <laughs> I guess I had to divide this thing up somehow. No, no. Um, when I wrote my trilogy, I always knew there would be three. There would be um, the first book to introduce uh, the main character and his past and the current conflict. There would be the second book to drag him and all the characters into the mud as far and as deep as I possibly could. And then the third book would be to, you know, bring them back up. And this is where he actually becomes the hero that everyone always knew he could be. Um, so I always knew there would be three. Mm -hmm. That was never a doubt. Um, and then with this new series, it's more of I know where I want it to end. So it it's just depends on how many uh, books I want it to take to get there. I see. And you don't know right now? Um, I'm thinking four or five. Wow. Interesting. Oh, because I have it's this is a different this is completely different from the trilogy because this is more of a the first the trilogy is more of a Lord of the Rings Game of Thrones kind of feel. Mm -hmm. And my new series is more of a um, supernatural, lost girl, Jessica Jones kind of X Files kind of vibe. So it's more, and it's it was kind of created almost like in homage to some of those shows in a way that it's like episodic. It feels uh -huh. more like it's like it takes place over about two weeks each, book, and there's not much time in between them. And you've got the quote unquote monster of the week, and then but you also have the underlying mythology that's going to play out throughout the series developing. Out, so. And you're completely 100% an indie author, correct? You're, yes, you're not I am. you're not beholden on to a publisher or, or an agent or anything. You're on your no. own. Yes. And people love you. Yeah. <laughs> like looking at your your Amazon, not Amazon, and your Amazon, like your 50 reviews, and they're all four and fives. Thank you. Right. That's like really hard to do. It, yeah, it's it's um I've I, quality stuff. I right? feel like I've got some incredible uh, readers out there and some incredible fans. Um, I just and I I love when they reach out to me and tell me you know I I was up till four in the morning you know I couldn't sleep or I was cursing your name. I'm like yay, <laughs> <laughs> curse me some more. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, uh, I guess we'll get into that here in a second. But in terms of, I mean, do you? Hmm, how, oh, what would be the question I would ask in this place right here that would be like, open up the magic book and you tell me what spell you will, yeah. or you, you've <laughs> woven to have earned yourself that kind of uh, fan base, I guess. Um, all I can say is I just, I try to be myself. I'm, you know, I, I enjoy chatting with everyone about the books. I try to be, I mean, you know, um, open and, um, Lots of sarcasm, though, so you gotta, you know, gotta be ready for that. Um, I like to have fun with it. I really, my goal is to make my readers feel something. It isn't always good. It usually isn't good. Um, you know, there's no puppies and rainbows here. <laughs> if you're looking for happy endings and sweet romance, this is not the place. 
Um, but I want to, you know, I want to take them on an emotional journey. And, um, you know, I don't hide that. I'm like, this is, you know, this is dark stuff. And, but it's also fun. And I guess that's who I am. Yeah, it's interesting. So let's go back there. to that room. When you were a kid and you were surrounded by books, what kind of books were in that room? Um, what were your you can favorites? Um, yeah, right. I'm thinking I like read, you didn't just read fantasy. You didn't just read. Oh, no, science. one of my one of my early um, book I read Gone with the Wind when I was in middle school, which was one, still one of my favorites. My first epic. Um, I was reading classics. You know, uh, I was reading um, westerns, uh, mysteries, uh, historical um, biographies. Everybody in my family read something different. And then my brother was, you know, comic books and science fiction and um, late great planet Earth. Um, and then my dad was all kinds of, you know, all the, the uh, Louis L'Amour Westerns. Um, I, you name it, I, I was reading it. Uh, but Gone with the Wind is definitely one of my favorites, all-time favorites. Who were you writing for? My characters. They have a story to tell. So. So you need to get them to what? Um, I, I think them up that, a yeah, get them up a tree and throw rocks at them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. think that's the, I think that's the old Danny okay, DeVito quote giant that I keep hearing. Flaming rocks. Yes. Volcanic <laughs> rocks. As many as, as many as I can. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I really am just writing to get, uh, you know, I, like I said, I come up with the characters and, um, there's, something about them that I just feel the need to share their story, um, whether it entertains someone or inspires them or um, whatever it does. I just, I need to get that out there. And well, I mean, in terms of this, uh, this last series, you've written three or no, it's four actually, right? Four books total. Yes. Four books. How long did that take you? Uh, well, the first one, it took me an, an embarrassingly long time. What's that? Um, <laughs> the, the first book in the Crown of Stones trilogy, it took me a very long time because, you know, I still had little kids, you know, they were still little, first coming up with, with all of it and putting it all together. And I was originally um, looking to go traditionally published. So I spent some time looking for um, agents mm -hmm. and I actually had um, one that I had a really good bite on and I didn't find out till later that he was, you know, one of the top ones for fantasy. Uh, that you really want yeah, to take that's it. very interesting looking at you now because i see you and you know what's very interesting is you slipped into this conversation without me even going what's the cl stand for <laughs> cynthia lee cynthia lee yes Schneider. and the lee is uh l-e-i-g-h for uh, oh, okay. vivian lee from gone with the wind because oh, okay. yeah. that's very interesting that that i was thinking about the whole time i was waiting for you to get on the front and ask what cl stands for <laughs> <laughs> you ask what that stands for. Make sure you ask what that stands for. And then yeah. all of a sudden we're deep in this conversation without me even caring what CL stands for. And then also well, another yeah, thing that pick it up. it's okay. I... <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it, I think that speaks of your personality that I think all of a sudden we're in this thing and I'm like, Oh, this is a really nice person. And we're just oh, going to go ahead you. and talk. And okay. then another thing on top of that is <clears throat> you have four books. Yes. And those books were written and they took time to write and you fit neatly into that groove of an author that has four books. Well, does that make sense? You. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, once the kids were old enough to, you know, be in school, I was like, that was, that was the whole thing. When I had my first child, I quit work and I was going to stay home with them. And then that was my husband. And I had the plan that as soon as they were in school, that this is what I was going to do. So I have definitely, I would say, dedicated myself to it. Definitely. So um, the first novel is called? The Crown of Stones, Magic Price. And when did you put first word down? I said, I'm going to write a novel. Um, well, see, again, that's hard because it, it morphed <clears throat> a lot. It changed very much as I changed and, and grew as I, when I first started, the, decided I was going to do this full time. Mm -hmm. um, and after I had my experience uh, putting it out there uh, with, you know, trying to find an agent and I had one that gave me some excellent advice, uh, which is rare for them to actually take the time to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and from that point on, I 
just sunk myself into learning as much as I could. I You're bought not going to share these... the advice, are you? I, I'm, I'm sorry? <laughs> You're not going to share the advice, are oh. you? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna hold on to that. <laughs> it's mine. Well, you know, it's funny. It's not, I can't really say it's advice. It was just a phrase that um, you know it struck struck with me. And I guess I could have just said, "Well, to hell with it. I'm just I'm done. I, I'm no one's. You know, I'm done. I'm just gonna give up." But I did just the opposite. You know, it was just basically. You know, he really he really liked it. He loved my ideas, but it just wasn't quite up to what he needed for mm -hmm. you know the market to be competitive. It just wasn't the writing. Just wasn't quite. Where he was. It was just on the cusp. Uh -huh. So I just basically um, taught myself from that point. I, I, every book I could get on writing fantasy, on writing, on, on um, fight scenes, on dialogue, on emotion, you name it, I read it. And I rewrote the entire thing. And I chopped thousands of words and, and changed characters. And so I really don't look at that. That, that first incarnation is so different that it's almost like it had a metamorphosis after that point, you know? But it counts though, right? I mean, oh, it, it does. It's so, still there. I have, I have all those in a box too. <laughs> I have all those, I have the original wow. notebooks. I have, you have so every like you have draft I do, one, I'm two, and rat. three. <laughs> I mean, how how long though? From because I'm, I have you know, I received bad news today in terms of my novel that I printed out. <laughs> this oh. thing is forever too, right? And yeah, it's been. <sighs> And then I get feedback today. Oh, you need to work on your commas. I was like, oh, be kidding oh. <laughs> what about my stupid commas? <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, work I, on your commas a little bit and then get it back to me. And I was like, huh? <laughs> I, I had a very love hate relationship with commas myself. But, um, yeah. you know, so, but I, mean, I understand completely. And like, it's like, you want me to spend another. How long is that going to take? <laughs> well, I would say Magic Price went through about eight rewrites all total. If you start from the wow. very beginning, yeah, I, I haven't I haven't had to do that since. I mean, I've I've learned so much, and then I learned even I feel like I learned even more going into book two. Um, so it gets easier I, and easier as you go along, then. Yes. Well, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. When I started out with this series, I had lived in the head of my main character Ian Troy for so long in the Crown of Stones. Then mm -hmm. when I went to go write this, not only was I switching from a man to a woman, I was switching from urban. You know, everything was so different. I was like petrified. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what am I doing? But that's why I did it because mm -hmm. I didn't want, I, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to, you know, um, make sure that I could still write something else. I had written Ian for so long and I loved the characters and I loved the story, but I needed to push myself. Yeah. So, I mean, guessing the age of your son, he's 15. 15. Yes. So 15 years to write four books. Um, well, actually, the, the, um, the, only the first one took, took a while, but he was, well, he was, no, he was, I didn't start actually doing full time until he was in school full time. He was um, in first grade when I started really writing full time. And then I had oh, another one. Then I had my younger son also at that point. So he was only in school half days and he was little. And so it took, it took a while. Uh, my youngest is 10. So it wasn't until he was in kindergarten that I really could focus full time. I mean, I, the level of confidence that you have, though, is pretty astounding. I mean, maybe it's just who you always were as a person. Um, well, I, I definitely have my fair share of writer's doubt. Don't, <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> don't worry about that. Definitely. It's there. <laughs> I mean, um, when you, when you started the new series, you, you mentioned a little bit of, um, trepidation in terms of what have you gotten yourself into? Mm -hmm. Do you have the fifth book of the, of the first series kind of? starting to work itself into the out of the crevices of your mind kind of like oh i'll just jump into this thing um no no it'll happen it'll it'll get there um i know how it's going to end so that's a help um but i am currently revising the second one and i have um a couple pages written on the third one on the draft but i won't i'm now i'm not worried about it. it'll it'll happen because when I um, went from books two and three in the Crown of Stones, there were things I still didn't know what I was, how I was going to resolve them. Mm -hmm. I still wasn't sure. And 
it just, it worked itself out. So I like, you know, it's, I feel right myself into a corner, then I just have to figure a way to get out. I mean, it's, you know, that's all you got to do. You got to dig in that floor till you find something. And, and I always do. So you just have to trust the characters. Once you know your characters and you trust them, um, it, it just kind of, parts of it kind of almost write itself because, mm -hmm. you know, that you know, they know, and you're just um, the conduit to get it out there. What is your process now in terms of writing? Are you a morning writer? Are you an evening writer? Do you set yourself up for a certain number of words per day? I, I have tried the words per day thing, and I feel like it's a lot of pressure um, because I'm not the fastest writer, so I can without three to 4,000 in a day if I really, if it's like really uh, in my head, it has to come out. Um, but I, you know, I still have a, I still have a life, you know, I still have the house to take care of and I still have, you know, friends that try to drag me out of my cave so I don't sit here and grow roots. Um, you know, and I, I still have, <laughs> I, would have you so irritated. I know, I know. Um, they're like, are you ever going to leave the house? Uh, but I, my best time, I'm not a morning person at all. So it's kind of weird that my best <laughs> writing is in the morning, but once everyone leaves the house, um, that's, that's my best time. Okay. Um, and I try to, I mean, there's obviously distractions because I have to, you know, there's all the promoting and the marketing and the emails and all of that. But, um, what's your favorite part, the writing or the promoting? The marketing? Oh, def well, definitely, um, the writing. But I prefer rewriting versus the draft. Rewriting is my favorite part, hands down. I love revisions um, because that's where you get to massage all the paragraphs. You get to uh, make the rhythm. You know, the, the rhythm has to come out. If it's not, if you're reading the paragraph and it doesn't flow like a song, like the, the like the short sentences into long sentences, and the it's just a flow to it. Yeah. And I, I love making that happen. Um, but at the same time, I really enjoy um, the promoting. I was not a social media person at all, um, but I love Twitter. <laughs> I admit it now. <laughs> I do. Um, Facebook is mm, Facebook's a necessary <laughs> evil, and I emphasize the word evil. <laughs> I'm not very good at Facebook. I don't know. I don't understand Facebook at all. I don't care for it. I feel like um, it's a platform for drama, much more so than Twitter. I guess because you're, you know, you have you can write. As much as you want, you know, you have the paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs. And uh -huh. I must prefer just, you know, little snippets on Twitter. It's much easier. But were you one of those fortunate people that got to bump up their 140 or 240? No, uh, no, no. I'm like, ah, but that's okay. I would, who got I would, that. Who I got know. Who were the what people that got it? Not I would trade that. I've not been verified either. Like, I'm not the one of the fortunate people who got verified either. I'm like, what no, who I, are these no. people? No, me <laughs> Who are the privileged people who got verified and got the... I, where do I send my bribe money? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I, I would give up the 280 characters if I could have an edit button. I want that edit button. I want button. the edit button, too, because <laughs> oh. I'm a freaking sloppy, sloppy oh. typer. <laughs> How many times? <laughs> I cannot I, see like... anything the first time through. I like, know. how did I miss three words in that yes. sentence? It's... Yes. <laughs> I know. It drives me up the wall. I'm like... Oh. Ah. I feel so dumb. And plus, I'm always inviting people to be on my podcast. And I'm like, okay, I just invited this person to be on my podcast. And I sound like a complete moron. So I guess <laughs> they're not going to be on it. <laughs> I'm like, you know, who's going to buy my books when all my tweets have typos in them? Like, <laughs> yep. At least yep, we're all in the yep, same yep. boat. I do like Twitter, though, a lot. I like the brevity aspect of it. I like when I actually yes. send out a tweet and there's no typos and I sound cool, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah those rare days right yeah <laughs> but i'm not i'm not i've only been doing it for about eight months or so okay or something along those lines excuse me for coughing in your ear i sometimes forget that i'm recovering from a serious ailment no oh, cold you're feeling better <laughs> <laughs> get excited my lungs start clearing and start coughing <laughs> 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 Um, okay, let's get back on track here. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, marketing. So marketing. you like the rewrite, you enjoy the marketing elements. Do mm -hmm. you think if you had to do it over again, would you try, or do you think that you could go more traditional now? Do you think you could take it? I have, I mean, I've had a lot of people tell me that I should. 
um, and that they believe wholeheartedly that I could. Uh, but I, I like the control that I have. You have a lot of control, don't you? I do. I um, have a wonderful cover artist, and I have you know great control over my covers. Um, you know my price. Looking at your website, you have a gorgeous website. Thank you. Your a um, lot of videos. Time on that. <laughs> Who does your um, voice work on your uh, tra trailers? Oh, um, my trailers were done by Frozen Creek Studios, um, and the woman's name is Kylie Jude. She's awesome. Is there is there a high production cost with something like that? Um, it's a little higher with the voiceover, um, but it's it's not terrible. It's not I terrible. think it's no, I think it's well worth it. I really do. I mean, you gotta, you know, you gotta you. Um, money sometimes you know so um, no i mean if you have it to spend you're gonna yes. make it back i mean that's the thing right yes you need yes i mean you want to um you know you only have one chance to make that first impression and that's yeah. why i believe i believe covers is something you should never skimp on um you know you, you can't wonder why no one's buying your book if um you know if you don't have a cover that's going to attract the eye that i mean i don't know where you are in your career i know where you are in your career you're better off than somebody say who has written their first novel and is floundering in a sea of like 400 twitter followers you know mm -hmm. you're marketing yourself you have an audience people in the traditional publishing world are looking at you going oh my god this should be so wonderful to put her to work with us <laughs> but you're already doing all the work <laughs> you're doing yes the job of six people you know what i mean and it is non-stop it really is it's um i mean no. they came to you and said hey we want your novels here's blah would you take an offer like that and just step back and let those six people do your jobs for you for whatever i'm not sure i i would i would think long and hard about it um i would it would not be a inst an instant yes that's for sure um I, w I wouldn't want to be stupid, you know, if they're going to offer me, you know, uh, movie deals and money and they're throwing things at me. I'm, yeah, okay, I'm not stupid. Yeah, that would be hard you to know. say no to that. But right. even, but a, even a smaller deal, you have the novels that you're writing right now. Right. You write the next one. You're like, hey, you have had 15 years experience yeah. doing what you've done. That's, I don't know. You have done what I think is smart. I oh, think that everybody who's in an indie career should do what you, I mean, you're the goal. <laughs> you're the, you're the golden. I mean, what is the, what's the cliche that I'm looking for here? You're what everybody should be trying for. Oh, wow. Work your butt off. Don't try to make, you know, the millions. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, if you go into this, about yeah, money, but in terms of you're looking for those 12,000 Twitter followers, you're looking for an audience and right. then eventually you know, traditional publishing will come knocking and say, hey, look, we'll yeah. take some of that effort off of your, your shoulders. Right. Well, see, there's the thing, though. Um, you still have to do a lot of marketing yourself, even with the traditionally, you know, traditional publishers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not unless, you know, it's not like it used to be so much. You know, you have to do a lot of it yourself still. Uh -huh. um, exactly. They really yeah. want you to be out there and have a presence and to interact. And, um, you know, and just because you, you go with one, it doesn't mean that you're going to skyrocket to fame either you know i guess, so you still I guess that's what i'm asking you is what would be the benefit is if they did come knocking would there be any for you um i guess monetary would be pretty much you know if, if it took off, off if it took off then you but know you'd still have to share with them wouldn't you yeah oh yes yes and see that's where it worries me i don't come to say i don't like this character cut him out yeah. this needs to be thirty thousand words less uh, you know that's that would drive me up the wall that's the part that worries me. And um, you don't you don't sound harried. You don't sound stressed out. You sound like you're you're loving. I do. The way that you're going. I, I do. And I, I am stressed. I it's I've got I can't tell you I my sticky notes all over my desk and my <laughs> I'm so behind in everything. I'm perpetually behind. That's where I live. Um perpetually behind New York. Um but <laughs> I love it. And that's the difference. Uh it's it's it is does not feel like work ever. And I love going to the Comic Cons. That's one of my favorite parts. I, mm. I love getting out there. And um, it's just That's it's one fun. thing I'm really looking forward to adding to my life is cons. Mm. I, was really, I don't know how I would add it to my life, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, you need to take your show on the road and go do some interviews. I've done a couple interviews at some of the cons with podcasters and, and whatnot. And that's what you need to do. You get out there and shove that microphone in someone's face. <laughs>
<laughs> I want to start getting some short fiction published in magazines first, though. Yes, there you go. And publish and finish writing a few more novels. <laughs> Yeah, in your spare time, I know. <laughs> I do. I wake up at two o'clock in the morning and try to get the writing done. I See, I'm the, I'm the opposite. I'm up until two. Okay, um, I can't but, do it. Yeah, I'm done at nine o'clock at night. I'm done. Okay. I have no energy. <laughs> well, lately okay. it's 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 harder. I mean, I'm up earlier now. The kid, I have to get. I get up with the kids when they go to school. But over the summer, it was easier. I'd be up till three, you know, and then sleep in. So. Because there's always something to do, um, you yeah. know, promo pictures, um, so there's always something to make, something to do, something to, you know, even if it's not writing itself. It's hard. I mean, in terms of myself, it's like, okay, shut it off, you know, turn it off, pinch it off, do whatever you got to do, go to bed because you got to wake up at two o'clock in the morning so you can start over again. Mm -hmm. It's a sense of, you know, duty. <laughs> it, is. it is. And I think for me, it comes again, comes back to telling the character story, you know. Um, I don't want to die tomorrow and have all this, you know, stuff untold. <laughs> you know, I got to yeah. get it out there. But it is. It's very much, um, but not, not, not in a negative way. Yeah. It's like a burning. You just got to, got to do it. Got to do yeah. it. Yeah, I got to finish the story. I've got to finish this novel. I want to finish this editing this podcast. Yes. I want to. I want to see what else I can do. <laughs> And I, and I think that's, you know, that's where the passion comes in. And that's why it's hard sometimes for people who don't have that passion for anything creative to, to really understand where you're coming from. Like, oh, don't you just want to take a break? Work's done. You know, just don't, you know, what are you doing? Look at your computer again. I'm like, I want to look at my computer again. <laughs> are you a... Uh, it's a sickness. Are you a laptop lady or are you a uh, desktop person? A laptop. Laptop. Yes. I like, I, I like to go... I like to um, sometimes if it's nice, I'll sit outside and write. I take it with me. I so. can't do it. I need to be stationed. Uh, this is where I work. I like my gotcha. desk. It's like command center. Yeah. <laughs> well, I usually spend the morning at my desk. And then, you know, I'll have lunch. And then I'll, you know, either move to the couch or outside or something like that. Just as a change of scenery. So and The roots don't grow. Yeah. And it's also, we don't have a yard either. We have like this little sliver of green stuff behind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much. People use it. They walk behind our place. We're not allowed to bring the dog out there without <laughs> people screaming at us about leashes and stuff. Oh, yeah. That's not good. So all the curtains are drawn so nobody can look inside. <laughs> so it's really a cave. Yeah, it's, I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm a cave person. I swear to God, I have Neanderthal yeah. DNA. Hmm. I really enjoy my cave and I have yeah. no lights on. There's like two, there's like a lamp that's pointed right at my keyboard and that's it. I'm just pacing back and forth. <sighs> oh, I'm a cave person. Um, <laughs> uh, so when do you think your first uh, book for the second series will be published? Well, the first book is out. Oh, it is. I apologize. Yes, that one came out. Yes. It came out in the, uh, late, uh, early spring, early mid spring. Um, what is I think the, um, What's the process for that? When did you finish writing it versus did you send it away for an edit professionally? Yes, um, I have uh, sent it for a developmental edit. And then um, I, you know, after I did the draft and then I revised it, and then I sent it for a developmental edit and then um, made all my changes. And then it went to for a copy edit, came back, made some more changes and then proofread. So it's back and forth a few times. There's no escaping that, is there? Uh, there really isn't if you want to sell any books. <laughs> um, I actually went back and did a, another edit of my first book a couple of years ago because uh, I had editors, but when it came to the proofread stage, I was out of money. I'm like, I it was me proofreading it 50,000 times over and over and over and over again. And I miss stuff. Yeah, so, that's me um, right now with my first novel. I just don't want to spend the money. I don't yes. want to spend the money. Yes. I don't, I'm, why am I missing commas? I have a bachelor's degree. I'm yes. should not be missing commas. I'm gonna find all the commas. <laughs> no, you won't. Trust me. Trust me. You won't. Your mind fills in the blanks and glosses over things after one. Oh, I'm you what happens? It. It's like my wife will read it. How did you misspell this word? No, it's not misspelled. Let me see it. Damn it, it's misspelled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's 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 oh so frustrating. It's but so um, sucks. I yeah. know I have. I'm I'm smart enough to figure out how to edit this novel, and I'll put yes. it up. And there's mistakes in it. Yeah so stupid and you know what yeah. also happens it, it develops like this over edited feel to it yes you know what i mean it just gets like this tight horribleness to it that yes. you can, you can tell there is isn't such a thing as chopping too much very much so yeah yeah that's what it feels like to me too like i've destroyed yeah. like yeah. this 
beautifulness that once existed on it. And yeah. oh, I don't know if I'll ever get it back. Oh, well, you, <laughs> wow, you saved all the old copies, right? <laughs> No, it's the original oh. that I keep editing over and over oh, and over and over gotta, again. No, you got to save everything. <laughs> yeah, that's what's happened. <laughs> everything I cut, I, I put on put another file, I save everything. Because you never know. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, Michelangelo took a gigantic chunk of marble, mm. right? And he carved into it until he found the David. Yes. That's how I view art. So my piece of fiction is that piece of marble, and eventually I will find that art inside of it. I will find my David. Yes. By chopping into it. <laughs> and taking out all the commas. And yeah, I will find all those freaking commas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yes, an editor is very, um, very important. Um, Three thousand dollars a pop, so six thousand dollars it costs basically. Yeah. 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 Well. And it also, I think, depends on what you're doing as well. Developmental edit is going to be more than, uh, you know, the copy edit and the proofread because it's a deeper level. But um, I learned a tremendous amount from um, my editor. I just, it's priceless. So. It's a very frustrating process, and that's where being traditionally published kind of really pays off. Yes, it's true. That's very true. That in itself. I mean, I don't even care about the cover art or anything mm -hmm. else. It's just that editor, that yeah. money, right? That $6,000 oh, yeah. is like, boom, traditionally yeah. published only, please. Yeah, it's hard. And it is. And, yeah. For somebody who does short fiction, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to publish short fiction until somebody gets interested. <laughs> yeah. and that's, well, you know what? That's definitely the way to go, too. I mean, if that's what you want to do, because you'll, you will definitely get attention and you'll be putting out things more often as well. Mm -hmm. And just write it. that novel over the period of whatever it is. Exactly. So then when they come calling, you got, hey, you got available. this in the background. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. I'm, I'm not unfortunate. I really do love short fiction. It's not even an effort. It's like, mm -hmm. just do it. Mm -hmm. And just slowly write that novel. Yeah. I'm going to cough. Hold on a second. Um, so what's next for you? The second novel right away, or you're working on an anthology short too, right? Um, both, yes. The second novel I am um, revising right now, and it will be going to uh, for copy edit as soon as I can possibly humanly finish revising. Um, and while it's gone, then I'm going to finish up the short story that I'm working on. I'm about halfway through it. Um, it's short as in word count. What are you talking? Five thousand, um, ten thousand? No, no, ten to fifteen. Wow, so you're going a little more than a novelette, like no, uh, novella. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I'd like to try to keep it at ten, but I I don't know if I see that because um, it's it's already about an eight eight five, and I still have ways to go. So you are commissioned, or is it something that you're just doing on uh, your own? No, this is actually. Yeah, um, I'm. It's a writing group that I'm a part of called the uh, Slush Brain, which is which is a group of writers that. We all got together. Um, we met on Twitter uh, over the fact that our, our brains had turned to mush. <laughs> because <laughs> we just, we, we, you know, long days, lots of words. And we all just kind of started uh, hanging out in, you know, Twitter messages and chat groups, you know, in Twitter. And uh, we, so we formed our little uh, group called the Slush Brain. And we, you know, are there to, you know, for moral support, help, whatever, you know, just there. So, um, our kind of our fearless leader, our captain of our ship, decided to do, uh, a, you know, to put together an anthology. And since we're called, since it's the uh, HMS Slush Brain, it's uh, the um, theme is strange voyages. Uh -huh. So all all of us who can manage to get something together by January first is the deadline. So I actually decided to uh, give my somewhat of a break. And I'm doing a short story that takes place um, after my Crown of Stones trilogy with two of the main characters. Oh, interesting. So, um, yeah. And then that will kind of segue into some ideas I have for another um, couple of books in that set in that world down the road. You've got to be proud of what you've accomplished so far. I mean, I, obviously. I have to say, yeah. Um, yeah, it's this summer has been especially exciting. Um, I actually had. Um, Two of my books win some awards, and I was like totally bowled over. Um, I never entered any awards before because I figured, what's the point? I'm going to pay all this, you know, I'm going to pay all these uh, entry fees, and nothing's going to happen. 
And then uh, one of my friends who's actually in this writing group said, you know, you need to do something uh, out of the box, something you haven't done before. You need to get, you know, do something different. I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> so I entered uh, too, and I won. And I was like, oh my God. So what was that like from beginning to end? Was that like you picked a contest, you paid an entrance fee and you just waited or? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and I actually forgot about them, to be honest with you. Until um, I got an email from one saying, you know, we'll be getting the winners out shortly. We had so many submissions and, you know, just stay tuned. And I'm like, oh, yeah. forgot <laughs> <laughs> about that. Because, I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't, I was certainly was not, you know, hanging my hat on any of this. I just figured, eh, whatever, I'll give it a try. Um, so it's pretty exciting. So I'm, I'm going down to the award ceremony in Miami in November. Um, and there's going to be all kinds of authors and media coverage and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun so it's just like a big step for me so. oh that's interesting and what what award was it um this was for uh the reader's favorites international book awards and oh. it's you know this one encompasses traditionally published authors small press self-published they have like thousands of entries and um, the crown of stones the first book took a bronze in fantasy in epic fantasy. Um, and then the first book in my new urban fantasy series took a silver. So you so, won two awards and then yeah. one. Oh. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. You cheated. You won the gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it was very exciting. I was shocked. Uh, so that's. Who, that's won a, the, uh, who won the big prize? Um, I know the, I know, uh, I think it was, um, in epic fantasy, the gold medal, I believe, was uh, Michael Weishart. I think that's who it was for the White Tower. Uh, I've read it. It's, it's very excellent. Familiar. Yeah, excellent I think book. I know that name. Yeah, He's an excellent book. I I don't remember for Urban. I met uh, after um, we were all posting about it. I met the woman on Twitter who won the gold in the Urban, but I, I can't remember her name right now. Uh, but I'm just looking forward to meeting everyone. Uh, the whole they the, apparently most everyone who's in the hotel that weekend is going to be. You know, either an author or there for the ceremony. So, do you like fun. spending time with other writers? I do. Um, I was just lucky enough. My husband and I took a trip uh, to Europe this summer. It was our first time, and we were in Paris. And we made we took a overnight to London. And I specifically wanted to go there to meet uh, one of my friends that I've met on uh, social media. She's a writer over there. So. Uh, cool. It's a blast. I we went to Hawaii a couple of years ago, and I met I made met one of my writer friends out there. Um, I you know, it's really cool. It's like they get you, you know, <laughs> you get each other. It's it's nice. I went to Hawaii earlier this year with my twins. Ooh, it was not fun. Well, oh. actually, Hawaii <laughs> was fantastic, but the flight, <laughs> yes, from New York, Newark, mm -hmm. actually to. Honolulu was the most miserable experience I've ever had in my entire life. They were. Can I just, ask how old the twins are? Uh, yeah, they. You may. They are just. They were just under two years old. Oh yeah, that's we painful. Went. That's a, that's a painful flight with kids. <sighs> my son screamed from yeah. the minute the plane left the tarmac oh. until we landed in Honolulu, and he passed out. Oh. The guy in front of me, he wouldn't let me hold him the entire yeah. time. My daughter did. She let me hold her, thank God. But my son kicked everybody's chair. We sat in the back room, kicked everybody's chair. And the guy sitting in front of us wanted to fight me. Oh, my God. <laughs> he stood up, and he was so mad. Yeah. He turned around and wanted to fight me, and I wanted to fight him back. I didn't yeah, care. Yeah, because there's nothing you can do. I mean, he has, you know, people have to understand that you're just as frustrated, if not more so, than everybody else there because, you know, you can't do anything. It, yeah. they, when they reach a point and that they're that worked up, you can't do anything. Yeah, it was horrible. It was, a, it was such a miserable experience. He got so mad he went back and yelled at the stewardess, the guy in oh. front of me. He was like, exactly. I don't, I know you can't do anything, but he's kicking my chair. I was like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's ripping my heart out. So. <laughs> it was so bad. It was so oh. bad. I was like, we. I asked my wife just yesterday, do you give them any Benadryl? She says no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. <laughs> oh, wife. She's yeah. a sweetheart, but my goodness, she's she loves these kids so much. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, that's really that's really fantastic. Congratulations on that. Thank you. 
Um, I cannot remember what I was about to ask you though. So that's the future for you in terms of going to Miami, meeting authors. That's really wonderful. You're really putting together a fantastic indie career. Thank you. That, I'm... that I think anybody in the industry would envy. Well, it's and funny. I, I feel like I'm bumbling through every day, but but thank you. <laughs> have you have you ever considered possibly writing a book on indie publishing? I mean, Who's... you said you've read all of the books on writing, and you okay. seem to be putting together a fantastic literary career on indie publishing. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really haven't, to be honest with you. Um, I am so consumed with the stories, and... Um, I have zero free time yeah. to add anything new. I mean, I, I, again, some of it is, is me. I'm like, I said, I'm not the fastest writer. I'm, and my stuff is very, you know, sometimes it can be very, the, the, the yeah, epic fantasy more so, but complex with plots, you know, everything is very, uh, very well put together, like a jigsaw puzzle kind of thing. So I spend a lot of time um, on that. And I envy people who can write very quickly and have time for like a gazillion projects. I also have the problem where I tend to um, get stuck in one character's head and like to stay there till it's done. So I'm not the type of person that will have like 10 projects going on at once. Um, you know what I think of it is more than anything else, I think it's just multiple projects at the same time that makes mm -hmm. it appear like people are writing really, really fast. Yeah. That's so I mean, maybe. you just have like five or six novels on your desk and you just rotate them. Right, so I mean, right. after four or five years, you just start pushing novel after novel yes. out, not because you've written you know, a thousand novels in a week, but because you have a thousand novels mm -hmm. rotating, finished. <laughs> That's my opinion right now, because it's how I write short fiction, just have them rotating, being done. See, once I get, though, in one character's head, I just want to stay there. Yeah. I just, I have a harder time switching, um, especially when I was writing Crown of Stones, it's very emotionally heavy. Yeah. Um, and uh, getting out of his head and into this new character, well, you know, she has her own issues, but, you know, it's a little bit lighter in some respects. Um, so going back from one to the next is just because uh, I, I really try to I write first person. So I'll do you. Yes, I do. So I really put my I try to write them kind of thing. Um, huh. I write um, third person deep point of view. Ah, I like to dig and mm -hmm. I um so we're we're about at an hour okay do you think that you think that we've uh, pretty much covered everything that we would need to talk about was there anything that you wanted to mention that you think we missed um i don't think so really i mean i so we get some great questions um no i think i'm good i i enjoyed this this was a lot of fun i don't well, know what the heck i was nervous about <laughs> well i've done some of these interviews that were nerve-wracking enough to make me nervous to talk to anybody on one of these things so i understand <laughs> that completely i talked to one lady my i don't even want to mention it um, <laughs> um i do ask a few questions just to get us off just to sure. find out headspace all that stuff okay. the first one kind of workshopping it so it comes off a little bit weird but what do you tell people who are kind of maybe new in the the writing game or maybe struggling to produce art or content or writing, what do you tell them to help them motivate or to help them realize their own potential? Um, I've had a lot of young writers come up to me. I, when I say young, I mean, you know, like teenagers, early 20s, um, at Comic-Cons um, asking for advice or I even had a couple people send me their stuff to read and, um, Oh, that's a tough things, question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the, and, and I love it. I, I, I um, feel honored, you know, that they would uh, come to me. And I think um, there's a couple of things. One is whatever you do, don't stop. You know, try and write as much. If you can write every day, I believe you should, even if it's only a paragraph and you throw it out tomorrow. Um, every piece of writing every um, helps, to, helps you to find your voice. Uh, especially if you're just starting out, and um, it, it you will see the improvements over time, and you will you know just you, don't stop, don't let you know get discouraged, and um, if it's in you, you won't stop. You'll just keep going, and something. It is happen. in you. 
don't get discouraged and you will find it, right? Yes, yes, yeah. I definitely believe that. Um, your voice will come out as long as you just, you exercise that, that muscle. It's just like any other muscle and you really need to uh, take the time. Like I said, even just a paragraph every day and slip into that, that way of thinking and that world that you're working on. I always promise myself, aim for 350 words, mm. just a page. Yeah, I have, I, I have a friend who, um, who a thousand words a night, a thousand words a night, that's his goal. That's lofty. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's lofty, that's like yeah. three pages. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot, it is. It's, and some days, you know, like I said, it flows out. Um, yeah. There's an author that, uh, there's a book he, he wrote called uh, Right Storm, uh -huh. and his name is uh, A.L. Mingle. And it's a great um, uh, way, you, it's basically this thing, he sets up this chat on Facebook and you all, you get together and you do nothing, you know, you throw, tune out everything and you write for a specific amount of time and then you take a break and then you chat and talk and, you know, just free, unclutter your mind for a minute and you go right back. He's got this whole system. Um, I, I, I download the book, I have to take a look at it, but I've heard great things about it. Uh, as far as like trying to target specific word counts and um. I can't talk to anybody in the morning. That's why I wake <laughs> up at two o'clock. I can't look at anybody. I can't talk to my wife. If I get distracted, I just, I cannot refocus. So it's yeah. two o'clock. I come downstairs. I don't look at my dog. Mm. Well, see, I, I had to learn to write in little snippets when the kids were little because I was still writing. I just couldn't really devote, you know, any long period of time to it. <laughs> literally sometimes be writing in five or 10 minute increments. Oh no. And you know, I would, I would always have it open and I'd be like stirring the pasta and run back in and then finish my sentence. And, and in the, at the time it was grueling. It was killing me because I just yeah. wanted all this time, you know, but it taught me how to slip in and out of the world so easily. But you that, know what, you're, you're a mom. So you have to be selfless. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hard. I don't know if I have that in me. I'm a dad. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm selfish. I'm kind of a prick. I can it is, be it is all hard, the time. You know? Yeah. There's times when I just have to, they need something or they want to do something. And I just have to, it doesn't matter what I'm in the middle of, you know, but they're older now. So they, and they also understand that sometimes, you know, you got to wait a minute. My um, wife, I'm, it's like a, it's like midnight. I've been asleep for like three hours and one of my children will cry or have a nightmare or something. And I'll wake up and I'll, my wife will jump out of bed. And I'll think to myself, okay, any second she'll ask me to do something, and she won't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll think to myself, oh, she's such a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, selfish, selfless um, mothers. I love them so much. <laughs> the um, other thing I would say for for new authors is to get a thick skin as fast as possible. Yes, <laughs> my God, that's so important. The powerful yeah. no will destroy you. Otherwise, yes. critiques yes. the workshop reviews. Oh my God, they're so painful and yes. need to be. And you, yes, yes, it's. It's hard. I mean, I remember, you know, like when you get your first bad review or you get, you know, um, it's, it's very hard, but you have to. Understand. You're not as good as you think you are. Believe me, not you. Oh, yeah. Everybody's I'm just saying, the writer is not as good as they think they are. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's and, very you know, painful. And rewriting is where the magic happens. And sometimes you need someone who's not in it to point out what needs to be done. I mean, it's just the way it is. But I've written same... thousands and thousands of stories. I mean, thousands, yeah. I mean, so many stories and you've written, you know, millions and millions of words and yeah. they've just, I mean, you've written four novels. I don't know. You've written like six novel stories <laughs> and you're, <laughs> we can't be all you. Oh, stop. <laughs> Thank God. I was just thinking, I've written so many stories and you've written only six and you're so successful and I need so much to catch up to you. But anyway, we can only be as good as your potential. Uh, but no, seriously, oh, yeah. have a thick skin. It's such a wonderful. It is. You really need to. Advice. Because you, it, you can easily give it up if you, if you can't take. And when you put yourself out there and ask for advice, you have to understand that, you know, people aren't just going to always tell you what you want to hear. And that's actually they're doing you a disservice if they do. Yeah, they will blow smoke. They, it's unfortunate. Your wife is going to tell you how good you are and she shouldn't, but she will. Your mom is going to tell you how good you are and she yeah. shouldn't, but she will. And you know what? You need to find the person that's going to tell you what you need to hear, which is the truth. Right. That's going to be a classroom of people or people on the internet. But, you need to find a workshop. Same, but at the same time, when it comes to like reviews, um, 
you also have to, you know, everybody has their own opinion too, and everyone's going to read a book differently. It's going to hit them differently. So if you have one or two reviews, or even, you know, depending on how many total you have, but if you have a handful and people don't like it, okay. But if like every review, everyone's saying the same thing, then you might need to take a look at what is going on. I love, uh, I love like the lower rankings. Like when I do an interview or a conversation and do one of my podcasts, I like to check out the lower ratings on people's uh -huh. books. And I clicked up, you only have four and five star ratings, so it's hard. So I clicked on the four star rating and the first one just says, I don't read this type of genre. I was like, then why are you doing a review? <laughs> yeah. Why well, are you I, reading I this book? And why are you doing a review on it? Yeah. But he had good things to say. And like he got hooked immediately and he loved yeah. the characters and the story and it was amazed, blah, blah, blah. But you know, the first sentence is, I don't usually read this type of book. Mm -hmm. like, well, I've had people give me a low review because they don't think cursing belongs in fantasy. Or I love the ones that say, UPS didn't give me the book in two days, and I'm giving it only a four-star review. Yes. No. Or the ones sorry. who don't finish it but give you a low review anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, you know, it's part of being out there. You put yourself yeah. out there, and these things are going to happen. So uh, you just got to kind of look at the other half of the people who enjoy it and cling to that. Yep. Strive to be the best you can be. It might not be the best everybody thinks you should be, but you are the best that you can be. Right. Um, that was fantastic answer to that question. And the second one, <laughs> what are you reading right now? Ah, um, I'm actually reading a, a couple of different things. I usually read a few books at a time. Um, just so depending on what I'm in the mood for, I can just, you know, pop something open. Unfortunately, I don't have the time I used to. Yeah. Um, you know, I can remember reading a book a weekend, you know, yeah. <laughs> those days are long gone. Um, I'm reading, um, I'm trying to think of, uh, what's the title? Hold on, let me look it up. Oh, Recreants by H.G. Chambers, uh, which is uh, a fantasy novel. It's very good. I interviewed him. Oh, did you? He's yeah. very delightful. He's a really very good nice guy. Um, so I'm reading that. I'm reading A Work in Progress by Rocky Rockford. That's more of like a, it's a thriller, I would say, more of a thriller. Um, and The Eleventh Percent by T.H. Morris, which is a paranormal. Um, I also have a paperback around here somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where that is. <laughs> I try to read a few on my Kindle and then at least one paperback. H.G. So. Chambers is Canadian, right? He's from Vancouver. I believe he is, yes. And he's a helicopter pilot, if I'm not mistaken. That I'm not sure. We were just we were just emailing. I just had an email from him this morning when I woke up. It was a great interview. He was one of my one of my earlier podcasts. There you go. Um, fantastic. And my last question, and I'll let you get off and continue doing your your Yes, the kids will be home in about twenty five minutes. I'm sorry I took up so much of your time today. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. That's fine. I, I, I need to pull away from the words every once in a while. They all start to mush, mush together. Yeah, I'm so stuck in a rewrite right now for a short story. I have like two sections left and I'm almost done. Oh, uh, good for you. So long. Um, where can we find you on the World Wide Web? Um, you can find me at clschneiderauthor.com. Um, where you can subscribe to my newsletter. You can join my new street team, which I just started. Uh, there's reviews, excerpts, sneak peeks, deleted scenes. There's a short story on there called Heists and Headstones that I co-wrote with um, uh, an author friend of mine. Oh, um, fantastic. But we're actually working on a, a Viking novel as well. So oh, that's something, yeah, I, I forgot that about that story. one. <laughs> it's a Viking epic fantasy. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So got some things in the pipeline, Yo, I guess. Guyman is getting that stuff started. Yeah. Love it. Um, you can you can always find me on Twitter. That's for sure. CL Schneider, yeah. CL underscore Schneider. Um, you know, Facebook, the usual. I'm I'm around, but the website's probably the easiest. You can connect with me there. Well, fantastic, and um, <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. You are a wonderful participant, and I I hope to uh, you know, get you back on here when uh, you have more stuff published or anytime sure. you want to talk. It sounds good. Thank you so much. I had a blast. Yeah, me too. And uh, you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.